Hello everyone, this is Mr. Everett welcoming you to another short mini lesson in our lovely poetry unit. Uh, first off, I just have to say, you, yeah, yeah you, the person watching this, well done. Seriously, the times are crazy, the world seems to be going a little bit wild, and you're still working. It's not an easy thing to be able to concentrate, to push past the things that say to us, oh, it's not so important, whatever you're doing, it's not so significant, um, and be able to still say, no, I'm still going to put an effort here. So do you. Seriously, well done. And if you're one of those who's discouraged right now, who's saying to yourself, I'm just not sure it's worth it, I strongly encourage you, continue on. Keep going. You will feel proud of yourself for the things you've done well, even if it's a struggle. As always, reach out to me or reach out to other teachers, especially if you have frustrations, if you need help, things like that. We are here for you. That being said, let's move on to the poetry side of today. And uh, as I've said before, poetry, think of it like a lens. It's beautiful in that it gives us so many opportunities to see new things, to see new perspectives, and we need that in the world right now. The ability to look outside and see things not just from our own little world, but from everyone else's. Oh, and speaking of that, let's start with a short video clip here. Okay, let's consider this for just a moment. The main character in the Red Hood is Miguel, from the 2017 hit Coco. However, I'm wondering, have you ever either paused the movie, or maybe with a movie that you've watched dozens and dozens of times before, ever stopped to wonder what some random person in the crowd is doing? You know, what they're up to, their life story. Like, look at this person on the left here, just chatting away with someone else. What's his story? What did he get up to do every single day of this last week? Or the person on the right, there's a couple ladies there as well. Uh, what do you suppose is their background? Uh, when you're doing this, it's the same as if you've ever watched a crowd and suddenly you've said to yourself, I wonder what's up with that person. What did they eat for lunch today? What did they just do now with their cell phone? Who are they texting? Who are they calling? Uh, Any time you've done this, what you're doing is you're exercising something with point of view. It's how we see the world. It's who we see the world or whose eyes we see the world through. And poetry does this all the time. Let me give you a quick example from this gentleman called Langston Hughes, uh, born in very early 1900, a prominent, prominent African American poet. Uh, this is a poem of his which has to do with, well, a main character's mother. And, of course, that requires him to consider his own point of view and to imagine what his own mother was thinking. But if you're looking on the right there, that's a crystal stare, sort of this symbol of being, oh, the richest, oh, the nicest. And this poem is about the exact opposite. So let's see what he has to say as he exercises this imaginative point of view. This poem is called Mother to Son, written by Langston Hughes in 1922, so just about a hundred years ago. Well, son, I'll tell you, life for me ain't been no crystal stare. It's had tacks in it, and splinters, and boards torn up, and places with no carpet on the floor bare. But all the time, I's been a-climbin' on and reaching landings, and turning corners, and sometimes going in the dark, where there ain't been no light. So boy, don't you turn back. Don't you set down on the steps, cause you find it kinda hard. Don't you fall now, for I still going, honey. I still climbing, and life for me ain't been no crystal stair. Now again, Langston Hughes has to use his imagination here. He has to jump into the point of view of this mother who's lecturing her son on what it's like to move forward when life kind of sucks. So, 
for you, you might reasonably be saying, well, Everett, sounds cool and all point of view and all that, but um, what does that have to do with what I'm doing? Well, it's actually pretty simple. You're going to choose one poem that you've written from this year so far from the unit, and by now you should have written a couple. And I want you to change the point of view. By that, I mean you're going to change who's the one who's writing or considering the poem. Let me show you what I mean. This is me as a kid, as far as you know. And when I wrote my poem, I wrote it from the perspective of me. But of course, I didn't have to. And that's what this point of view revision is about. For instance, how do you think that cat feels right now? Uh, to me, boy, it looks annoyed. If I had to write a poem from the cat's perspective, I would probably be wondering why this human seems to be practically crinkling my ear. But you don't just have the limit to that. It could be a parent who's taking the picture, wondering what this little kid's going to grow up to be. It could be as silly as the pumpkin growing up only basically waiting to be picked sadly to end its life by being stabbed okay well we'll just stop there but you can get the concept you could write the point of view and make us look at things from a whole new way in fact i did let me take you to a quick example of what i did with mine okay on the left what you're seeing here is just one of my earlier poems it's written from my perspective as i believe about a four-year-old it's just about what I don't know, what I'm considering. On the right, I decided to do something completely different. Uh, I wrote it from the perspective of a tree. I mean, seriously, we got trees everywhere. Uh, but we don't often think about them. So I thought, well, what would a tree think of this basically little hairless little thing running around there? So let me read you a little bit to give you an idea of one way you can imaginatively do this. This is called No Roots. What is this scrabbling, squeaking little thing beneath my branches? Its bark is pink, and it hasn't shed its strange gray leaves for winter yet. Absurd. How can it eat? It has no roots. How does it survive? Its bark looks pale and unhealthy, no doubt about it. How does it take in the sun? It has only two branches, and weak ones at that. How does it not fall over? Does it wander like a pine needle whipped in a windstorm? How has it not learned the wisdom of silence? It creaks and squawks like a sapling falling over. What is this world coming to, that a respectable tree like me should watch the world go to seed? If this is the new fashion or some sort of joke, it will never catch on. Now, that's just one way to write this. Uh, again, you could easily choose something from like the perspective of your parent, as they're looking at you if they're taking the picture of the photograph if there's someone else in the photograph you can do it from their perspective just saying uh just wondering adding what you know about them it can even be super imaginative you could change the time frame frame let's go to here saying something like oh a person 200 years in the future on this spot what might their life be like uh it could even be a thousand years ago uh, who would be the people living here, or what would the land look like that's different? So, as with other times, if you've struggled, you haven't even had a chance to write some poetry yet, I'm sure we'll have an arrangement for other possibilities for you to work with. Uh, but again, we're not looking for perfection. You don't have to desperately work to make it rhyme or anything like that. Figurative language or good details help bring us into the poem, but primarily this poem, which I would like it to be about 15 lines or more so that you're able to work uh, with details, you're just exploring a new point of view here. Who else could be a part of this scene? As always, feel free to email with questions, let me know other concerns like that, or simply email to let me know how you're doing. This is a stressful time. Uh, feel free to connect with us teachers. We really do care. We want to hear what's going on in your lives. But until then, I will see you next week for probably one of the last many lessons of this school year. And thank you again for all of your hard work. Stay safe out there.